Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to review how to manage users, and then I'm also going to talk about how to manage groups. In the Ubuntu uh, desktop editions, and specifically Ubuntu desktop version 1804, uh, 2004, uh, and any newer version that uses the um, a new uh, revised GNOME desktop, what they call the GNOME desktop. Now I also have uh, an older video that shows how to do the same tasks on the older Unity desktop. That would be versions 1604, 1704, uh, around in there. Uh, those are versions that used a prior desktop uh, known as Unity. Um, and I'll leave a, a link if you're looking for uh, how to do this on the older versions. I'll leave that in the um, description below. Uh, but this is how to do this on the new uh, uh, GNOME uh, desktop that they've come out with now that they've introduced uh, 1804 and above. So uh, for most desktop users, all you really need to do is know how to add a new user. Uh, there's a built-in utility. Uh, it's fairly simple. Uh, this would be if you have multiple people sharing your computer, you want to add a guest account or whatever. And it's pretty straightforward to do that. Uh, and uh, there's a built-in utility that works fine. Um, there's another utility that you can add. Uh, and after I show you the built-in utility, uh, we'll show how you can add the second utility that adds group functionality. Uh, and so I'll discuss that in a second. There's two ways to uh, load the uh, user utility. Uh, and uh, it's in setup. You can get it set up a couple of different ways. You can drop down the box here uh, and go to settings. Uh, the other way that you can do this is to go to activities and search for user. Uh, search for users, it'll do some searching, uh, and then it'll find the uh, user utility add or remove users and change your password. Uh, and it'll take a second here to load. Uh, and this is the utility uh, to either change your password, uh, if it's just for you, or to add new users. Uh, before we can do anything, we need to unlock and authenticate. Uh, so we click that and we type in our password. Uh, and we authenticate. Uh, and at this point, we can uh, change our own password if we want to. Uh, we can set in automatic login. Uh, we can do other things such as choose an icon. Uh, we could change our uh, username. Uh, and then finally, we can add a new user at this point. So once we've authenticated, we can click Add User here. This will create a user account. It'll give us a dialog, and we have two choices. We can create a standard account, or we can create an administrator account. An administrator account um, is allowed to make system changes, of course. Uh, we'll create a standard account, and you start by typing in a name. So we'll click in, uh, let's see here, John Doe. Uh, and as you start entering the name, it will create, um, here's the full name, of course, it will create a username. Uh, you can take a look at some suggestions. So for John Doe, it suggests J. Doe, uh, D. John. You can pick one of these or you can type in something to replace it. Uh, and as it indicates, um, this will be used to name your home folder, and that can't be changed once it's set for this user. Uh, you can later edit the full name uh, if you want to, but this is actually a login name, uh, and it names your home folder. And once you create that for the user, you can't change that. Uh, you would have to delete the user and start over again. Now for password, you have two options. You can allow the user to set the password when they next log in or you can set the password. If you want to set a password, it does go through a password verification routine. It won't allow you to set a simple password like you would just type in password. Um, and it's not going to like that. It says try to avoid common words and it won't allow you to confirm it. Uh, so this does preclude you from uh, if this is a test system or something, or, or you want to use something similar, it won't allow you to do that. So um, for right now, I'm going to uh, select Allow User to Set a Password when they next log in. 
Uh, the system that I'm going to show you in a minute uh, will allow you to type in a simple password. Um, so if you want to get around this limitation, um, there's a way to do that. Uh, for right now, I'm going to go ahead and add this account. Uh, we can now see that we have two of these. Again, uh, if you want to do some other things at this point, um, you could change the login name, but not the, um, not the username, as I just mentioned. Uh, you can select a picture. There's some um, that are provided to you. You can take a picture using the system camera. Uh, you could select a picture from the file, so that'll be your icon. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Uh, you can also uh, use the screen to remove a user if you want to remove a user. If you select remove a user, you can uh, elect to delete the files. This deletes the files from uh, the user's home directory. You can elect to keep the files. Um, or, of course, we can cancel the operation. Uh, so this is pretty much it for the built-in utility. Uh, it does not allow you to uh, do anything at all with groups. Uh, by default, um, a, a group is created for each individual user that's the user's group, and the user is a member of that group, uh, and there's no utility for um, uh, managing or doing anything with groups. That comes with this uh, built-in user utility. But this is sufficient for most um, desktop users who are using it um, uh, as a desktop machine and they just want to add another user who has access to the machine or to create a guest account, something like that. So let's talk a minute about groups. Uh, groups are usually used in, in a larger multi-user environment uh, for people who are doing development work uh, where there may be multiple uh, computers connected to a server or multiple uh, computers networked together where you may have um, uh, a, a server with with common files on it. Um, uh, for example, suppose you're in a development uh, environment and you have a web server and you want a group of individuals uh, to all be able to access a, a common uh, web server and set of development files. So you might make a group called dev. Uh, that group would, would be provided with certain privileges and access to certain files. And so you would assign members who have privileges to those files to the group dev uh, and then it will be easier than assigning each individual individual access to those files and so that would be a reason for uh, using groups uh, and so there is an older um, there are a few different ways to do this there's an older utility you can add to the gnome uh, desktop that will give you the ability to manage tools in order to install that, we have to first bring up a terminal. I've already pinned this, but if you don't have a terminal there, a couple of ways you can do it. You can search for terminal here. Um, and I find this useful enough that uh, it finds terminal. Um, you can, um, I've already pinned it to favorites, so um, it's offering to remove it from favorites, but you might want to pin this to favorites. Let's go ahead and just run this. Uh, and uh, this is our um, uh, installation um, uh, place where we can in install files. And what we're going to need to do is we're, we're going to need to run this uh, as the root user. So we need to use the sudo command. And it's sudo apt, which is our installation package manager, install. And then the package we want to install is um, it's um, gnome dash system dash tools uh, and we'll press enter here we need to enter our password uh, it'll take just a couple of seconds here we want to continue go ahead and install that um, there's a couple of other ways you can install this you can use the um, uh, installation uh, manager where you would install others if you're familiar with the Ubuntu desktop it's in there someplace um, but um, uh, this is easy enough at the command line uh, just a few uh, quick commands um, I'll, I'll pause this while it finishes it takes just a couple of seconds okay we're back now it's in installed this application uh, we can go ahead and uh, close that window and now when we go to activities and we type uh, users 
Uh, we see we now have an application called Users and Groups. So I'm going to right click this and add to favorites. So I have it down there. Uh, and um, we can close that out now when we get back to favorites. Here's the application that I've just pinned uh, to my favorites. So we'll go ahead and run that. And we can close this one out. Uh, and now we have um, a, uh, actually a little bit simpler interface. Uh, and we see that we can uh, add a user um, and uh, we can uh, manage groups. So to add a user here, uh, we'll go ahead and add. We need to authenticate. Uh, and we uh, can simply create a user as before. Uh, we get the same kind of uh, a deal where we start to enter the name and it, it suggests a username. Uh, we can accept that. Uh, we can pick another or we can type in our own. I'm going to go ahead and say it's fine with that. Uh, and now here's where if we want to override or, or change and enter a simpler one, we can. Um, so I can go password if I want to and it's not going to stop me. And we'll confirm. Uh, we could also generate a random password. Notice that this screen does not give us the option of allowing the user to set their password uh, at first login. Uh, but once we set up the user, the user can come in and change their own password uh, using uh, this application if they have access to it uh, or um, the built-in uh, user application. So I'm going to uh, click OK on that. Uh, once we're here, we can go to advanced settings. The advanced settings are a little bit different uh, and a little bit more expansive in this application. We can enter some contact information, office location, work phone, home phone. Uh, depending on um, you know who has access to this application, if they have administrative privileges and if they uh, can add uh, a user, you, you would think they would have access to this um, different um, uh, privileges that you could assign them, including uh, the ability to uh, access external storage devices, configure printers. So here's where you would check off what they can and can't do, share files with the network. Uh, take a look at these privileges here. Uh, I'm going to cancel this right off. Uh, the account type here is where you can um, set custom. Right now they don't have any, but you would want to select administrator or desktop user at this point. We'll make this person a desktop user. Uh, and um, password asked on login. You can set um, uh, individual access so that they're not even asked a password. They just get logged in. Uh, so that's pretty much it for um, the users. Now let's take a look at managed groups. Uh, you can see that um, uh, by default there are a whole lot of, of groups that uh, a Linux system comes with. Uh, most of these are system groups. They're used by things like backup, uh, by your different kinds of systems, uh, and so on. So you can take a look at these. Most of these uh, you should leave alone and um, not do anything with. Uh, so let me um, uh, close that. So we'll open this up again. Uh, and this time we'll add a group, uh, and uh, to use my previous example, we'll add a dev group. We'll authenticate before it will allow you to change anything, of course. Uh, and the name of the group will be uh, dev. Uh, the group ID is assigned by the system. Uh, it, it, there, I can't think of any reason why you would want to change this, although you could, um, but I can't think of a good reason. Uh, for you to do that. Uh, and at this time you'll have the opportunity to add uh, members to the group. So we'll add both Jane and uh, John Doe to the group. Uh, and uh, that's pretty much uh, all you need to do. Now we can go back and take a look at that, uh, the group that we created. Um, and we can see it here, Dev. Uh, and we can look at the properties. And the only properties that we can look at or potentially change would be the group ID, which I would recommend you not do that. And then we can see that Jane uh, and John are both members. We could uh, remove them, uh, of course, if we wanted to. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Now, uh, of course, to make this fully functional, uh, what you would need to do is you would need to uh, perhaps make directories uh, that um, 
uh, the group dev would have access to, and then you would have to uh, change ownership uh, of those directories to the group dev. Uh, and then it would make it very easy for um, uh, the, the uh, people, uh, the users that you add to the group dev to have access to those directories. So it, it actually simplifies um, uh, management of the, of the computer um, uh, quite a bit. Um, there are other, other ways to do this. There are also uh, server utilities that can be installed um, uh, and they can be installed on the desktop as well uh, besides this utility here. This utility is the easiest one I think uh, for you to just add to the desktop but there are some uh, other management utilities uh, such as Webmin uh, is one uh, that would allow you to manage not only users and groups but also your uh, your SQL engines, um, uh, disk management, and, and other things. So you can check into those and you can also check uh, more into what you can do with users and groups. But this will conclude the uh, lecture for now. Uh, this gives you a taste of what you need to know to be able to manage users and groups uh, on the Ubuntu desktop. I'll just mention finally in passing that I'm demonstrating this on a virtual machine, but it's identical if you have uh, Ubuntu natively installed on your laptop or desktop. So I hope you find this useful. Thank you for watching. Uh, post any questions you have down in the comments and uh, good luck.